You could be self-sabotaging your data science career without even realizing it. And in this video, I want to go over the big four career killers that I have seen and some I've even committed myself. Let's get into it. Most entry-level data scientists focus too much on the technical aspects. I did this too. I was more interested in how I can use a neural network to solve X or how I could model Y with an XGBoost model. Having this passion is a really good thing. It shows you're interested in the field, you like continual learning, and that this is probably a good job for you. However, that enthusiasm is kind of misplaced. Fundamentally, as a data scientist, you're there to bring value for the business. So you're mainly there to answer business questions, and it doesn't really matter what kind of technical implementation you use to do that. I remember early in my career, my line manager told me to focus on impact. Initially, I just thought, yeah, sounds great in theory, but it kind of doesn't really work and it's not that tangible. However, what in reality focus on impact means is that you should answer business questions. So look to your stakeholders, what are they struggling with? How can you make their lives easier? These are the questions you should be answering and then thinking about how you can implement them in a technical way. To be honest, most of the time, their really simple or like baseline solution would give you most of the value. And then you can iterate on more complex methods. But the fundamental shift you gotta make is that you gotta think business first, then technical skills after. Data scientists who focus on tangible business value will get promoted faster and progress higher in their careers. Because like I said, they're solving business problems, which is bringing money into the company, which is ultimately kind of like a business's like operating lifeblood. It doesn't matter if you used a linear regression model or recurring neural network. If you brought in millions of pounds, you brought in millions of pounds. It doesn't matter how you did it realistically. What you work on matters so much more than how hard you work and how technical your solutions are. So make sure you choose your projects wisely. I recently wrote a whole newsletter article about why we should think more. And I appreciate it may sound quite philosophical and a bit woo woo, but how often do you just sit down and think uninterrupted for like 10 minutes? I reckon probably never. Call me sad, but I think about my career growth and professional life quite a lot. I ask myself questions like, where do I want to be in one, five, 10 years? What kind of company do I want to work for? Can I see myself doing this job for the rest of my life? Where do I really want to work? Like what are the main things I want to work on? Really sitting down with myself and exploring these questions in my head gives me really good guidance. And if I'm honest with myself, it kind of tells me like, this is what I actually want to do as opposed to what I'm doing now and kind of ignoring that gut feeling that what I really want to do is not what I'm currently doing. I appreciate that's a mouthful, but the whole point is that answering these questions gives you kind of clarity in your head about where you see yourself going and where you want to go. Let me give you a tangible example. So answering these questions like a few months back, I basically explored what I like most about my job as a data scientist. Now, I love the maths, I love the coding, but my favorite and most rewarding aspect is seeing my initial algorithm going out into production and actually making life decisions that brings business value like we discussed earlier. Now, this kind of implementation of my algorithm into production is quite a small part or like a little part of my whole data science workflow. But there's this whole other job called a machine learning engineer that basically does this full time. So after like lots of deep exploration and kind of figuring out exactly what I want to do, I realized, well, hang on, I think a machine learning engineer is kind of where I really want to work as or what I want to work as. So the past three months I spent upskilling in software engineering principles, data structure and algorithms, and just learning how to write production code. And now in a few months time, I'm starting a new job as a machine learning engineer. So this is not to boast and show off by any means. It's more to show you that through answering these questions and just thinking about where I want to go in my career, I made a good decision, at least I think at this point in time, of where I want to go. And I only got that through being really honest with myself and like I said, just thinking about my long-term vision. So I suggest that after watching this video that you look at those questions I gave you, just think about them and be really honest. Even better, write them down so you can be more clearer with your thoughts. And you may find that what you're doing right now may not be exactly what you want to do in five, 10 years time, but you only know that if you really, really explore. This one, I don't think is necessarily just data science advice, but general life and work advice. Jobs nowadays can be fickle and redundancies are not that abnormal in our current economic climate. 
So no matter who you are, make sure that you save and invest your money for any potential future rainy days. From reading The Psychology of Money, people have different views and perspectives about saving and investing. So just choose a strategy that allows you to sleep comfortably at night. If you want some inspiration, I'm gonna list my current portfolio. Nothing here is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is purely for kind of entertainment or just to show you what I do. Again, don't copy me. This is not financial advice, but I need to make that really clear. So most of my investments is in the S&P 500 in the stocks and shares ISA, about 70%. I then have roughly 10% in blue chip stocks like Coca-Cola, Amazon, uh, you know, Microsoft, just like these big tech companies mainly. I then have some money in crypto, about 4%, split equally between Bitcoin and Ethereum. I then have about 13% in emergency funds, which is in this uh, SNI premium bonds here in the UK. And then I also have some money in a regular savings account, about 3%, very little. And then I also have my pension, but that kind of comes in pre-tax, so that's kind of a separate thing but I contribute to my pension uh, every month. The main takeaway is just think more about what you're doing with your money and why you're doing those certain things. This final one could be a bit controversial and maybe I'm just a bit envious, but I don't think moving up the ranks really quickly in your career is actually a good idea. Now, hear me out. Let's say, and I've seen this before, that you move up the ranks really quickly to senior positions, which is great, you're earning income, and you clearly worked hard and big congratulations to you. I'm not saying anything wrong with it. I just, it happens and it's good for people's careers. But there is this slight problem where you move quickly and too quickly where I've seen in the past that people become quite boxed in. And what I mean is that you essentially developed a skill set that's probably very niche. That's really good for your current company, your current role. And you've probably only worked on a few projects. And you've built, like I said, a really niche skill set and ability range. Now the problem comes in, let's say something happens at your current company and you want to move or say again, made redundant. It's now harder for you to transition to another role or the same kind of level at another company because like I said, you've got quite a niche skill set. So your kind of options become very difficult if you want to move on. Again, these are all assumptions and ifs, but it's just showing you that it can be a bit risky. So what I recommend to most data scientists is that don't rush through the career chart, right? Like you can take your time. You don't need to be senior, principal, staff, whatever it may be by the time you're 30. If you do, great. And again, congratulations to you. There's nothing wrong with that. But I recommend that as a data scientist or machine learning engineer, even that you have a T-shaped skills to your career. So what this means is that you know the basics really well across the whole domain. So like, you know, everything from classical ML to like CNNs, RNNs, LLMs even, uh, reinforcement learning, all that kind of fun stuff to a decent level that you can, you can understand it, you can have a conversation with someone, but you're not an expert. Then you have two to three domains that you know really well. So in my scenario, I know optimization, so like operations research and forecasting to a really good level, or at least above the average data scientist. And then I probably want to add another one in, but having those kind of broad range of skills and those three domains you're really good in gives you a lot of abilities to first of all specialize, but also pivot if you need to. The problem is to develop that broad skill set and become an expert in a few domains, you need to actually work in those areas and have hands-on experience, which you're not going to get if you just move up the ranks really quickly. And the more senior you get, the more specialized you likely are. So you're not gonna have as much flexibility and time on your hands to really develop that broad skill set. If you want more data science advice like this, then make sure you check out my weekly newsletter, Additional Data. I send it every Monday morning and it's all about my thoughts and experiences as a practicing data scientist. If that sounds interesting, I'll leave a link in the description below for you to check out.